I'm Eric Hoyt with WDCS, the Whale and Dolphin Conservation Society, and I'm going to take you around the world on a Google Earth tour to see 12 of the key proposed protected areas and networks for whales and dolphins. Now, as we zoom into Western Scotland, the government here has promised to create a network of protected areas for Scotland's marine life. You can fly or swim along with us. Our proposed Hebrides Marine Reserve and Cetacean Critical Habitat Network features bottlenose and rizzo's dolphins living close to shore and some of the highest harbor porpoise densities in Europe. Now as we go down south in the western Mediterranean Sea, the proposed Alberan Sea Marine Protected Area has fin, sperm, and Cuvier's beaked whales and six species of dolphins living here year-round. Protecting the Mediterranean is a real challenge, with 30% of the world's ship traffic on only 1% of the ocean surface. It's a noisy, busy place. Greeks and Romans first celebrated Mediterranean dolphins here. But today, we either need to safeguard their homes or lose them forever. Now heading west across the North Atlantic, we fly low over the proposed southeast shoal of the Grand Bank, MPA. This is part of the world's once greatest cod banks, and this shoal remains a key productive fish rearing habitat, a place where cod might begin to recover. This area also has uh, very good feeding grounds for humpback and other whales, dolphins, and seabirds. A recent scientific cruise here found blue whales feeding, and WDCS hope, hopes to visit here later this year to check out some of the best spots. Following humpbacks and other whales as they swim south in the North Atlantic, for the winter breeding season we come to the Agoa Sanctuary, declared in 2009 by France. It covers all of French Caribbean waters, Proposals are to extend this sanctuary to neighboring island waters, including the Dutch Caribbean, who have said they're interested in making a joint sanctuary. That would give these resident sperm whale families more protection. Now moving inland and crossing the Amazon Orinoco Basin, draining South America, we follow four species of dolphins upriver, passing many of the areas that are being linked together as the South American River Dolphin Protected Area Network, or SARDPAN. This is a project of WDCS and Fundacion Omacha from Colombia, and we're inviting reserve managers, dolphin researchers, and government departments from more than 46 proposed and existing protected areas in nine countries to come together to create special zones for these dolphins. Now flying around Africa to the Indian Ocean, we might imagine sailing with Portuguese discoverers and spice traders en route to the East Indies. Writing in their log books in the 16th century, they noted a vast seagrass area in the middle of the ocean. 
the proposed Sayadamala Bank MPA on the high seas of the western Indian Ocean is the world's largest submerged banks. Rarely visited as they are a hazard for ships now, the bank's rich seagrass ecosystem offers productive feeding areas on and around the banks for blue, humpback, and sperm whales. Crossing the Indian Ocean to the Sundarbans mangrove of Bangladesh, we can meet Irrawaddy dolphins and nearly blind endangered Ganges River dolphins. Three riverine reserves here were just protected by the Man Bangladesh government. From here, we cruise down to the coastal waters where finless porpoises and the pink Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins live. And offshore, at a deep water place called Swatch of No Ground, we find Indo-Pacific bottlenose spinner dolphins, along with pantropical spotted dolphins and brutus whales. In a country with expanding human population, pressure on fishery and local waters, dolphin and whale numbers here remain healthy, according to Bangladesh Cetacean Diversity Project research sponsored by the Wildlife Conservation Society. So flying south, we reach the proposed West Australian Cetacean Marine Sanctuary Network. Includes critical habitat for southern right whales, humpback whales, blue whales, as well as this recently declared species, the near-threatened Australian snubfin dolphin. These are selected critical habitat areas that need protection. The Coral Sea on the other side of Australia, also a very, very important area for protection, which joins the Great Barrier Reef. And now we head for New Zealand, which has had its own program to designate marine protected areas, beginning with protection for its endemic endangered New Zealand dolphin, also known as Hector's dolphin, but much more needs to be done. The proposed New Zealand Dolphin Sanctuary focuses on expanding the protection to cover the prime dolphin areas all around New Zealand, up to 100 meters deep, to rescue this charismatic species. Journeying to the far north Pacific, we meet families of killer whale or orca pods living in Kamchatka and the Commander Islands. The Far East Russia Orca Project, sponsored by WDCS, Humane Society, Animal Welfare Institute, Ruford Foundation, and others, has been studying them for a decade, exploring the meaning of their dialects and social relationships. And then in 2009, WDCS started the Commander Islands uh, the Russian Cetacean Habitat Project in the Commander Island State Biosphere Reserve to identify critical habitat for eight species of whales. Here we see humpback whales feeding in the Commander Islands. Now in the opposite southeast corner of the North Pacific is a large-scale oceanographic phenomenon called the Costa Rica Dome. This shoaling of the strong, shallow thermocline of the eastern tropical Pacific with its cold, nutrient-rich waters has become very productive. The proposed Costa Rica Dome MPA offers a rare year-round feeding and breeding ground for endangered blue whales, sperm and other whales, and various tropical dolphins are also living, living here 
and endangered sea turtles move back and forth to Costa Rica beaches. Various shark and other top predator fish species are abundant. WDCS was the first to propose this area, and now we're working to help protect it as a high seas marine protected area. Now finally we journey to the furthest southern ocean outpost on earth, the site of the so-called last ocean, the icy Ross Sea. This area has the highest primary productivity in the southern ocean and a largely intact near pristine ecosystem. In the global commons of Antarctica, it is time to make a stand for high protection. The raw sea should be the jewel in the crown of the long-awaited Antarctic Marine Protected Area Network. The Ross Sea Region Marine Reserve, a highly protected 1.4 million square mile natural outdoor laboratory, promoting research into climate change and how ecosystems work, must be protected. We must all become the voice for whales and dolphins and give them their rightful place in the sea. Please sign our global register in support of Homes for Whales and Dolphins.